All right, guys, here we are. I am with the new record holder for New Hampshire on the greatest sport fish in the state. Hands down, the channel catfish. This is Matt Smith. He's the new 2020 champion <laughs> of catfish. He's even beat me, which is awesome. I've been waiting for somebody else to be into the catfish like I am. Somebody who respects them like I do and can catch the big ones. And here he is. So we're going to ask Matt a few questions. And I'm pretty sure he's going to tell us there's a lot of nondescript areas and he's not going to tell us. But hopefully some of the questions I ask he can answer to help you guys maybe catch a channel cat too. So here we go. Matt, tell us a little about yourself and what you do for a living and how you got into catfishing. Well, I, uh, I like to hunt and I fish. That's what I do when I'm not working. And I'm a oil burner technician with Allen Brothers Oil out of Westminster, Vermont. And uh, I, I only got into catfishing last year. A, a good friend of mine was big into it up at Champlain. They've been going mm -hmm. up since about 2012, two of my buddies. And they kept trying to get me to go with them. They were catching these big cats, these 15, 20 pound cats. And I was like, man, I want to do that, I want to do that. And they'd be, oh, we're going up, you know, this this weekend, whatever. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was going to go with them. And then, oh, we're not going, you know, now we can't go until. So it never worked out. And then finally last year, my my buddy was getting married. And they held this bachelor party. We rented a, a houseboat up on Champlain. And so I, I ended up going up with them. And we got into a couple of cats. Just, you know, I didn't know much about it. You went and threw cut bait, and, you know, and... and we, uh, I got my I got my first one with six pounds, and after that I was like, wow, these are cool fish. This, I mean, <laughs> I caught on a regular six and a half foot medium bass rod, and that thing gave me the business. I mean, it was rip and drag just to get to the boat and zzz, 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 take back off. And ever since, you know, I went up, you know, a bunch more times with them last year with my buddy's boat, and then uh, a couple times at the, you know, from the bank on the river because I said, well, we got them up here, you know, and I, I didn't really do very well up here last year. But then this year, I just I said, well, we have them. I said, when I just kind of made it a thing to to try to get into them, and we started fishing a bit, you know, down down in Northfield and Hinsdale, and and up further north towards Walpole and stuff, and just kind of started figuring them out a little bit and, and getting into some fish. And the uh, most recent spot that we started fishing panned out really well. Yeah. And uh, actually, we were just there Friday night, and we got. My buddy and I put six fish in the boat. He got five, I got one. They're all between eight and nine and a half pounds. So wow. we've, uh, this is the time of year to start getting them, I think. Yeah. It's, it's starting to get better because it was, they spawn. It seems like they have, a, they have a long spawn, it seems, up here. They'll go from almost, almost, I think we were, I think June, we started seeing like they were tucking in like the spawning grounds. We find them real close to the snags and stuff. Like you'd, you'd, yeah. I mean, we'd hook up to some fish, probably females would lay their eggs. But I guess from my understanding, the males stay on the mm -hmm. stay on the nest and really don't eat for the whole period while they're incubating the eggs and guiding the, well, guiding the fry, I should say. Yep. And you'd hook into a fish, and but you weren't getting them. But they were just so deep in that stuff that yep. unless you had a winch and you just got them out of there quick, you weren't getting them. But it seems like the last few weeks it's, it's picked up. And yep. They're starting to be more prevalent. Now, but. just to, to illustrate to you guys something, I went Friday night also. I didn't take the boat. We didn't take a whole lot of gear. We just kind of went. It was kind of our last trip because bow season's going to start. I got two fish. They were two pounds apiece. <laughs> he went Friday night and he cleaned house. So, question is, deep water or shallow water? Well, the first, the first five fish, the first four fish to come over the rail were in probably three to four feet of water, just like that big one I got last weekend. The second two fish that we got were tight to the bank, but down another stretch of river where it wasn't gradual. It was just sheer drop off, and there was some wood and stuff there, and I'm going to guess that the baits were probably in seven or eight feet. They were right on the bank, but when you know your, your weight hits, you feel it drop, and I... I'd guess they're probably seven or eight feet of water where those fish were, but they were tight to shore. Okay. Now, kind of walk us walk us through that record fish you caught. You, you know, explain to me the night um, and how you guys went about it. And I know you you probably, if you're like me, you're targeting those big fish. Yeah, we were we were, we were catfishing, mm -hmm. and if, if I sometimes we will go down. We do have some spots down. 
towards the mass border and even in the mass because I buy a mass license where we'll target eater fish if we want a couple of small fish to eat. We know we can go there and you know get a few in that two to three and a half, four pound range good mm -hmm. eaters because they get bigger than that, they get fatty anyways and they're kind of fishy tasting and plus they get up four or five pounds and I'm like well they're on their way to becoming a, a pretty solid fish and mm -hmm. I treat them like bass guys do bass, you know they get yeah. one that's three, four pounds and I'm like well that's getting close to be a you know, big trophy fish and we'll let it go, that's what I do with catfish. Okay. But we, uh, it was actually a, a spot that I hadn't fished, I'd fished that stretch before, you know above and below it. But uh, a friend of mine had been up there. They just barely got into catfishing, and they were, and they, uh, they were fishing down below where we got that big one, and they did pretty well one night. They got, I think the night I was I was down more south, and I got a couple of eaters one night. But that night they got four cats, and they, I think they were between five, and they got one that was a little over seven pounds. Mm -hmm. Then they went the next night, and they actually got one that was. They only caught one fish and lost two, but the one they got was eleven pounds, ten ounces. So I was like, well, so I got talking to them, and I'd been trying to figure out how to get this thing where they were anyway, because I, I didn't know where the launch was that they were using. Yep. So I went with them, and, and we uh, we fished the spot that they'd been fishing, and it didn't pan out. I think at midnight I got the first fish, and it was like a two-and-a-half pounder. We let go. So we headed we headed north and kind of just just watching the watching the depth finder and stuff. We found the spot was you know kind of an outside turn in the river, and... It's kind of a nice gradual bank that come out and then it, it dropped right off. We were set up off the drop off and they were just outside of my boat so I come up inside them because they were fishing straight off the back. And I, uh, I hooked up a bait and zung it into the bank and set the rod down, turn around say something to them and all of a sudden the drag starts going. I said, oh. So I picked and I lost that fish at the boat. It was probably a eight or nine pounder. It was a big fish. I was all by myself. Didn't have a net man. I'm like a, like a dummy. I grabbed the line trying to get my hand in his lip because he wouldn't fit in my little net that I had. And uh, he popped off, and there he was. And I caught. Then they they got a couple of fish. I think my buddy got one that was six, just shy of seven. It was like six eleven, and he got one that was just shy of eight. Then I caught one that was about five. And then I caught one that went eleven ten. It was my PB at the time. It was big deal, high fives and this and that. And then they kind of moved their boat off a little bit because when I got that eleven ten, they were close enough that. That Jake was able to hook onto my boat and swing theirs over, and he hopped on, and he actually helped me land it and got pictures of it for me and stuff. And uh, we were fishing. I was I was sitting in probably 10 feet of water, and I was just throwing my baits right about three, four feet of water. It's all cobble bottom, just like almost all the river is. Yep. But there's a there's a bunch of lay downs through there, as a lot of the river has a lot of wood in the river. And uh, it was just it was one of those nights where they're just hitting, hitting, hitting. Like no matter what you threw them, they hit it. But that, that big fish, he uh, luckily it was on my, my medium heavy catfish rod. It wasn't my bass rod because I probably would have been in trouble. But he took <laughs> off and I hooked him and I knew it was decent. He was, you know, I could see him and I had a headlamp on. I could see him and I was yelling, that was a good fish. I figured probably eight, nine pounds or something. And he, all of a sudden he gets near the boat and he realized he was hooked and he started to actually have to give him drag. And on that rod, I usually don't have to give him drag even if they're up eight pounds or so. I mean, it's a good fight, but I don't, usually don't have to let him take line. And he all of a sudden, just said, I told him, this is a good cat. And, uh, of course, I got him up to the boat, and I tried netting him, and he weren't going in the net, and I wasn't touching the line, because I broke that other fish <laughs> off. And I went for him, and he took off again, so I got the rod like this, and here's this fish, and he's taking off, and I, and finally, I, I, I got him up to the boat, and he, he's sitting there back and forth, and rolling around like they do, and I finally got my Got my hand in his mouth and pulled him up over the side. And I mean, as soon as I get him over the side, I see how thick he was back to, you know, back to belly. And I'm like, that's a big fish. Like, he's heavy fish. And I, I put him on a scale. And uh, first thing I always do, I get the hook out and I got my grippers right on the scale. I zero the scale out and I put the grippers on him. And it immediately went to the high 14s. It was 14, 11, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15, 1. So it bounced back and forth between 14, 15, and 15, 1. And I'm yelling to those guys, oh, I'm reading the scale as it's bouncing, and they're like, no way, no way. And I'm like, and it's, I told him, it's 15 pounds, I told him, and then he's like, well, you got a state record, do not let that fish go. And friggin', they actually end up coming motor and over, and then it kind of, I mean, I was still shaking 20 minutes after I caught the thing. We were measuring <laughs> it, and we weighed it on his scale, and so we, so yeah, we, uh, and we realized, well, we got a state record, we're going to do with it. I was like, well, I have to keep it. So I put it live well, and they actually tried calling fish. I the fish at 2:30 in the morning. Yeah. They they truck called. Uh, 
fishing games this batch to see when somebody would be. If it was going to be a Saturday, they're going to see when people would be in Keene yep. at the uh, headquarters. And they're like, oh, about 8 o'clock, people will be there. And I'm like, I don't think so, it's Saturday. But we locked out because it was raining, and uh, Bill Boudreau was patrolling that day anyway. Yep. And he was, because it was raining, he was at the headquarters. We pulled up, he was there, and he was able to, to fill out the paperwork for right. us. And, but didn't sleep that night. I got home at like, I don't know, 4.30, I think, in the morning. So I just put coffee on and waited uh, for the wife to get up. And when we, they had to ha the kids had a horseback riding lesson that day anyway in the morning, so we all made a family trip to Keene. I dropped them off at the, dropped them off at the horse riding place and went to fishing game with the fish, so. Now, did they give you an age on that fish? They did. I, I'm curious to know, because I myself would like to know how long does it take these fish to get to, to where they are. Well, like, I know that with Jim's fish, that's Jim Matheson's fish, which was 12 pounds, they said that was a nine and a half year old fish. Yeah. So your fish is above above that, somewhere yeah. probably 10 to 12 years old, yeah. depending on feed and its actual growth rate and everything. Yeah. But um, What time of year was that nine pound fish? Was that a post-spawn fish or a... That 12 pounder was post spawn. That's 12 pounder, I yeah, say, that yeah. was post spawn. That was about this time yeah. of the year. We that's why we kind of always try to fish that day. We always go back to the same spot he caught it. Yeah. Which everybody, nobody, well, it's a spot that's pre, It's kind of a community hole now. Yeah. But um, now that the catfish are getting popular, but uh, it that's always been my thing is always river mouths. Yeah. I've always fish river mouths, which I've found now that I've been doing this that are much better in the spring. They're much better yeah. as that, that pre-spawn run. Yeah. That's always. In the summertime, three to four pounders there all the time. You know, yeah. fun. If you've taken somebody who's never caught catfish, that's a great yeah. time. But for, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the big ones now too. So um, so now that you've won the, uh, you've got the state record, what is your thoughts of it being broken? I think it's going to get broke. Yeah. I think it'll be broke a few times until it gets into that 20 to 25 pound range, about where the channel cat starts to kind of, I mean, they, they get, the world record is over 50 pounds, but yeah. most states that have had channel catfish as a prevalent species for a long, long time, the state records are 30 to 35, 36 pounds. And I don't see why we won't eventually have catfish that big. We have the feed form, we have the we have the you know the different types of habitat in the water, the different depths for different times of year depending on what they're doing. Um, I kept one I mean there's a lot of bass in the river and I kept a little eater from down the southern port part of the river a few weeks ago and all he had in him was bass. A little three pound cat. All he had I think he coughed about four or five of my live well and he had huh. he had two more in his belly when I you know, I mean they were just you know, yep. three inches long, they're yep. all smallmouth. A little spingerling. And if you go around the river at night now, a light, you know, you look in the grass and stuff, that's what you see, a ton of young of the year yep. bass. Just, you know, the catfish are just... <laughs> we we found them. we found them full of uh, sea lamprey. Yeah. The young, you know, the little tiny sea lampreys are heading back to the to the ocean. We found yep. that in shad. Yep. Tons of shad. Um, yeah, I wondered about that. Like when the shad run in the spring, like we were fishing the river, you know, earlier in the summer, and it'd be no matter where you were, whether you're up to Walpole or down at the Massachusetts line, there'd be dead shad just yep. floating down the river from, you know, post. I've run. had that happen to me, and not be able to catch fish. Yeah. Because there's too much food in the water. When you get that shad debt, that when they start dying off, it really, you know, we've fished certain places that when they come in. You'll get like a six or eight pound cat that'll puke up a eleven inch shad, which yeah. is amazing that they can fit that in there, but they yeah. do it. So let me let's see. What's the next way? Okay, as far as gear, what do you run for gear? Um, hooks and sinkers and that. Just run of the mill stuff, or you you get specialized gear? No, it's basically like a lot of people use for their stripers. Like I actually do a bunch of these on the boat, but I like a two ounce. Lead bank weight because you can't run anything. You can't run anything an ounce or under if it's lead. And I've never found a steel bank weight, and I like bank weights. Yeah. So like a two ounce bank weight. Keep that in mind, people out there who are producing this the fishing gear. We'd like tungsten or steel. Tungsten would be good. It's yeah. Heavy. Nice those 
either the round river weights or you're using the bank weights, yeah. which are like a it's like a like a be, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's actually a couple laying in the bottom of the boat right there. But the, yeah, they they look like a big egg with a a, with a handle loop. on them with a loop. Yeah. Steel. We live in New Hampshire. We have loons, not in the river, but that's a whole different story. Anyways, somebody make steel, please. But I run a uh, I run braid, usually thirty pound. For a rod, I I <clears throat> actually the the nine and a half pounder I caught. Friday night was on my six foot six bass rod, but it's I don't recommend using six foot six bass rods to no. catch good sized cats because they it's hard on the fish. I mean it's, it's fun, but it is harder on yeah. the fish because it takes a long time to get them in. But my preferred setup, I have a I have a uh, it's actually an ugly stick catfish rod, but it doesn't yeah. have to be a catfish rod. But it's, a, yeah. it's a seven foot medium heavy with a, I like the Akuma Avengers um, mm -hmm. or any any spinning reel with a, a bait. I like the bait feeder feature. Yep. So then the Akumas is what I'm used to, so I run that. So like I like the Akuma ABF 55 or an ABF 60, 60, even a 60 or 65 is probably a little better. The ABF 55 might be a little undersized, but just a you know heavy, medium heavy spinning rod with a, a bait feeder reel, 30 pound braid, and I just run a, a slide like you would mm -hmm. on a fish finder rig striker fishing with a you know, 18 or 20, 24 inch braid leader and a six aught circle hook. I like a circle hook because they don't usually don't deep hook them. Right. When I got that big one, they were, even with circle hooks, I was getting gut hooks. Which what what size circles do you use? I like a 6-aught. Six 6-aught, six okay. Four, four to 6-aught. Yep. four right. For channel six cats. Aught. I know some of you guys are running 8s and 10s for blues and flatheads, but even for our largest channel cats up here, a 6, a six is pretty six good. 6 is good. Yeah, you get the heavy wire because they will straighten the light wire ones. Yeah, the Eagle Claw, I've, I've used a lot of the Eagle Claw hooks, the regular Eagle Claw laser sharp octopus circles. Mm -hmm. While I haven't had a fish straighten them, I've straightened them unhooking the fish. Mm -hmm. Which, so like they have like whisker seekers and some other, a, a nice heavier, a he, the heavier the hook the better. A nice Absolutely. heavy, heavy gauge. And that helps you with, when, when they run, they take that bait. They'll come to, like, I don't use a bait runner, right? I'll run mine solid, and when they come to the end of it, they hook themselves. But if you've got a big fish, and he does that, he can pull that hook right out, or he can straighten that barb right out, and, or the, the point. I run barbless now, so um, I try to get them so they can pop right back out. But the nice thing of the circle hooks is once they're in there, they're really not going to pop them out. Yeah. And it is a pain in the butt to try to swing them around when there's a barb on them. So, um, yeah. If you if you had any advice for a guy who who just wanted to start doing the catfishing thing, um, what would be your best piece of advice? How to how to start catching these guys? I will say a boat helps tremendously. There, you can do it from the bank. We've caught fish off the bank, but the access is just so limited. A lot, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're not afraid to bushwhack, if you've got a machete and you're not afraid to, you know, walk half a mile off the road and get down to those spots, you can do it off the bank. But when you can just drop a boat in at the launch and you got the whole, the river is just your oyster, you can just, you know. Absolutely. But, I mean, they're, they're not really, it's not hard, it's, it's back to basics, that's part of the reason I love it. It's mm -hmm. just, it's a piece of bait and a hook and a weight and you just, bait, bait doesn't matter that much. I know people that catch them on chicken breasts and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. I like cut bait or chicken livers myself. Mm -hmm. um, for cut bait, I have noticed a difference if you're using like, you know, like I've, I've caught bluegill, you know, and brought them home and cut them up and, and use cut bluegill or sunfish and or whatever. And they will eat it, but it doesn't seem as readily. So regular bait fish species like fallfish, chubs, golden shiners, yep. stuff that it's almost like they know, they associate that scent with something that doesn't have spines is easy to eat you know or suckers we've tried big suckers at champlain cut them up they didn't work as well but i've tried tip up size suckers i've seen yep. tip up suckers i'll throw from ice fish in the freezer use them a couple weeks ago and the little you know we were fishing area we we're just get, catching some smaller ones but they ate them right up like candy you know just cut huh. them in half and put them on and send them out but structure structure is important any place you know they they're like any fish they want structure drop offs mm -hmm. points you know bridge pilings wood they're going to be where the bait is Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're as much of a predator fish as, as a bass or a pike or, a, you know, or, or anything. So people say, oh, they're just a bottom feeder, they're eating trash. Well, not really. They're, they're, they're a predator. They're eating, yep. 
they're eating fish. And then, you know, people say, oh, I want stinky bait. And they make these stink baits. They get burger and hot dogs and chicken, leave them in a bucket out in the sun for, for a week or whatever, you know, and add some blood in there and this and then. That's not what they, you know, stuff doesn't rot in the water. Like, it's <laughs> not natural to the fish. They're not used to smelling dead, rotten fish that's been dead for out in the sun for four days. Because yeah. in, the, in the water, nothing gets wasted. If fish dies, it's, it's eaten by a turtle or, or yep. whatever else real quick. So I like to keep the baits natural. Except I, I like livers, and I guess there's not really chicken livers naturally no. floating down <laughs> the water. But No, but for some reason, they, but they love them. They like them. They, they do. Yep. So that's if you want to get into catfish and a boat, I mean, you don't need to have a boat. You can go up and fish below the dams is good, you know, or any spots that you can get. If you can get to the river on shore, you can probably catch a catfish. But if but if you have a boat, it helps. You can, you know, look for structure, look for points, look for drop-offs, you know, runs, holes, you know, bridge pilings, logs, and just get out there and just, you know, get near the structure and, and wet a bait and, and just... I guess just learn learn that way. Right. Yeah. Next question: Night or day? I like night, but you can catch them during the day. Mm -hmm. We've uh, I haven't caught many big ones in the river during the day, but we've caught fish up to ten pounds at Champlain yep. in the broad daylight, and we've got fish in the river three, four, five pounds yep. in daylight. Um, yep. I've actually we've we've been thinking about starting to fish with jigs during the daylight. Running, you know, drift in the river drifting, and, and yeah. running jigs because I caught one. I caught one at a, a stretch, you know, in a, a lower stretch of the river a few weeks ago on a piece of cut bait. And while we were anchored up, the fish took it, just a quick little, quick little run and dropped it. And after I started bringing that bait back in, and on the move he came in and drilled it like it was nice. So I've, we've actually thought about starting to maybe start fishing jigs, covering more water to try to find some of these fish, but. If you had it, if you could only fish for catfish one time a year, you could only go for one month. What month would it be? Probably September. Yep. Although I got that fish last week in August, so maybe the last week in August to the third week of September. I yep. just, but uh, yep. although April's good, we've done April, April, and May are really good. So it's, it's. I guess any time they're not spawned, but I'd, I'd say September right now, yeah. just from my from my experience. September is, yeah. I think my PB last year up at Champlain came from, it was like, that was a September fish. Yep. And we've been doing pretty well lately with some bigger fish. So, right. so for right now, of course, come October, I might change my mind because I might do better. Or worse. Right. And it, you guys, just so you know that these catfish, once the water gets cold in the winter, they'll still bite. But you need to find the deep water. They're going to suspend in about 40 feet. So you need to find these big deep holes to do it in the winter. You can even take a boat on the Connecticut in the river as long as it's not iced up. As long as it's not like 50 below zero. But um, So right now what these fish are doing and why his fish it bit and it was in that shallower of water. They're feeding up for that winter. They need to get the weight on their body so they can just kind of go. It's like a torpor. They kind of just go and suspend. They'll bite stuff when it comes by, but they're not going to go after it. They're not coming in the shallow to eat. So right now, in the fall, they're really hammering the food. So I think I, I have to agree with them. I think the best time is from like August until October is the best time to catch them. Springtime's good, but the males seem to be a little thin in the, in the spring. They're long. Let me tell you, they're long and they're thin. The females are big because they're full of eggs, but they're not full of food. So they're actually, they look heavy, but they're not as heavy as they are right now. That's my theory, anyways. Yeah, yeah they're filling up, you know. Mm -hmm. The closer you get to, you know, while it's still is warm water and the food's still available, they're going to get heavier and heavier. So Absolutely. I, the, the guy that got me into catfishing, he, it was another guy that got him into it up at Champlain. He always said October was the month to do it. Of course, I never went with them in October because it's deer season and I want to be in the woods. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, there might be times this year where, you know, I, I might forego a sit in the tree stand to, yeah. to go, you know, go for the crack at another trophy cat. You know, it's, it's That's why to... I want to shoot my deer, my deer with my bow right off the bat in September so I can be doing this yeah. and waiting for rifle season. Seven in the morning, September 15th, get that yeah. out of the way and then you get... Yeah. You got <laughs> exactly. almost two months. You got a month and a half to uh, to go catch catfish. And so now that you you've got the state record, what's on your bucket list? What's next? Do you want to 
just solidify you as the new cat man do. You know, the guy who's catching the big ones. I'd like to beat it again. One. Beat it again? Yeah, I just um, want to beat it again. Yeah. So, it, like a lot of guys, they, win, they get the state record. I keep wanting to say win it, but it is kind of winning, you know. Um, a lot of guys, they do that, and then, you know, it's, it's off their bucket list. They've got that, and they don't want to continue, but you, you want to keep going. My, uh, my goal was a 15-pound cat, whether it was here or at Champlain. Mm -hmm. At Champlain, a 15-pound cat would have just gone back because yep. it's just... There's, uh, there's 30 pound fish in that lake, I think. Oh, yeah. But that the 15 pound fish here was, you know, bigger than any fish anybody had. I mean, I, I, I think people have caught fish like that and, and just, just not, yeah. Ate them or let them go. Yeah, that's the other thing is people, I think people around here, one of the problems is people treat catfish like they do horn pout, bullheads. Absolutely. And they, they catch it and, oh, it's a horn pout, you know, whether it weighs three, five, six, eight pounds. Oh, it's a huge horn pout and it goes in their bucket and they take it home. Mm -hmm. And there's there's no limits, unfortunately. I actually emailed Fish and Game earlier this year about it and they, they didn't really want to. They didn't, I don't think they wanted to hear anything about it at the I time. I think Matt and I are going to become very good friends. But I, uh, there's no there's no regulation on catfish in New Hampshire or Vermont even. And you'll see guys at Champlain, they'll, they'll catch these, you know, they'll have a real good night and they'll catch all these, you know, 6 to 8, 10, 12, 14 pound fish. And they'll have their tailgate lined with them on the truck. And, they, and even a big place like Champlain, you can't just be, I mean, the, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go downhill because... You can't just be taking all those big breeding fish yeah. out and expect that they're just, oh, this is a ton of them. Well, yeah. there's not going to be. No. I mean, if you just, but people treat them like horn powder, I think, and they just, they just keep them, keep them, keep them. And so, so you would be in favor of, say, a, a, a size, like a slot limit type deal, or maybe um, doing like they do with bass and saying, okay, during the spawn, you can't keep them. Yeah. Or during that spawning run, you can't keep them. And maybe put a number limit on, you know. Yep. I mean, granted, yep. if, granted, I mean, a lot of states that have limits, it's like 15, 20, 25 right. fish or something, which I've never caught that many fish in one night up here. No. But, I mean, they, you know, if they put a five fish limit on, it wouldn't bother me because I never keep that many fish anyway. And right. And what, it, what would you need, like right now, if they consider a channel cat like a horn pout, so it's 50 fish. Yeah. 50 fish. You're talking 50 fish of three to four, the average. I, I'm going to say when I'm out there going after a, in a spot where there's a lot of them, they're three to five pounds. Yeah. 50 fish at three to five pounds. You cannot consume that much fish, okay, in a year. So what you need to do is, I agree, five fish, period. End of story and make it so from May to June you can't keep them. Art, it, well, artificial. I don't think. I know people who have caught them on artificial. Yeah, I think people do catch them on jigs once in a while when they're bass fishing, or maybe even I've heard of them hitting top waters and stuff mm -hmm. like. Or you know, a husky jerk or something. If it goes right by that fish, he's like, "Oh look, bait. He's got, he might hit it." Mm -hmm. But have you tried frogs in the spring? I have not. I've heard that they were good. I've heard. I, there's a couple of catfish pages I follow on Facebook. And there's guys that. They use real frogs. They'll go catch a bunch of frogs and use them mm -hmm. as live bait, and they they say it's they yeah. say it's real good. You know they eat a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I've heard in the that. spring in the tributaries in Champlain when they're on their spawning runs that the frogs are the number one bait. Yeah. Oh. And I've thought about trying it. I just we have a funky law in the state about how many frogs you can get. Yeah. And if you get on a spawning run and you only got I think it's four or five frogs you can keep. That's not a whole lot of bait. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't even know we had a limit on frogs. Oh yeah, I've, I've never, uh, I've never. I mean, I think I've used frogs for bait a couple times as a kid. You know, you're, you're yep. fishing on pond, little frog hops by, and you grab, you know, fishing with shiners or whatever. Yep. You grab it, you hook him through his lip or his back leg, and send him out yep. and catch a bass. But yep. I've never, uh, I've never looked into the possession limits on. You know, I've never gone out digging yeah. or anything like that for. Yeah, you know, it's bullfrogs, it's not many. It's it's barely enough to even if you were catching bullfrogs to eat. It's not, not yeah. even enough to eat. Okay, so. Just a few more questions here, so we can wrap this up. But um, how far north do you think these catfish are, as far as in the river, in which dams? How far north? I know how far north I've caught them, as far as north as Walpole or uh, Bellows Falls. They're um, they are north of the Bellows Falls dam. Are they? I don't know. 
in what kind of numbers, but I do know they are north of that dam at this time. I know of one that was caught, it was, it was like a four pounder, but it was caught up at uh, Hoyt's Landing in Springfield. Okay. Which is a little ways north of the dam. Yep. So eventually, another five, ten years, maybe we'll have a another uh, yeah. stretch to yeah. Yeah, target them. We, we we won't have to go all the way south. We can. But I, uh, they're they're they are in decent numbers up at least as far as the Bellows Falls Dam. Like a catchable, yep. catchable numbers. So it's not it's not like where you can target them and not feel like you're totally wasting. Okay, your time. that that would be my question. You know. Um, I lived in Chesterfield. That's how I got into the catfish. Yeah. By complete accident, because I was actually targeting eels. Yeah. And you can keep those slimy <laughs> things. I'll tell you what. <laughs> when we caught them. We were catching five pounders like they were nothing. Yeah. I mean, every time you went, it was five, six, seven pound catfish, and nobody knew that the catfish existed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure people knew, but the state didn't know. And that's how we got into it. And I fished the section above Hinsdale, above there, and never caught one. Yeah. And said, they must be below. That's the only place they are. And um, But then I start hearing stories about it being here, and I'll go and I'll try. But at the time, I was limited because I had no boat. So I'm fishing from shore, and the only places you can fish from shore really aren't conducive to catfish. Yeah. So that could be a problem. So, um, how how are you? How do you think? What do you think of tail races, dams themselves? Do you have good luck with tail races? The uh, actually the biggest New Hampshire catfish I'd seen until I caught my 11 pounder the night I got the state record was in tail race waters. Okay. So I think you know there's there's a lot of life up there. Like you you fish below the dams you know at night and it's just there's bait everywhere. There's bass rising. And you have the nice the current seams and everything. The only problem with below the dams we have up here is there's a lot of stuff in the water. There's wood. <laughs> there's steel. So you go through a lot of tackle. Yeah. Or you'll you know you'll hook a fish and you, they're gone. They get wrapped around in an old old piece of guardrail or something that's yep. down under the water there. And but they can be productive. Yeah. They are definitely a. And usually you have some depth right there just because of the way the current yeah. works and, and, you know, digs out the bottom of the river. So they, yeah. I think they're, they are definitely a place to consider when looking to start. And that could be a reason why there's big, there, there's definitely some really big fish in those tail races. And I think it is because they're so hard to fish with all the debris and, like you said before, access to them yeah. is very hard to get to. Yeah. I know the the one dam that we fish, a boat like this to get there, it's a safari to get that boat from the boat launch yeah. to that dam. So yeah. it's uh, I think that's one of the reasons why people aren't fishing it. Yeah. But. All right. There's there's areas I can think of that I'd like to actually fish from the bank because I know I can't get this up there, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to get there from the bank either. There's, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're limited. And, and a lot of the Connecticut River, the banks aren't, they don't come down like no, this. They're straight down into a you're, ravine. You're grabbing trees as you, yeah. as you, uh... And it's, you can get down it because gravity is your friend. Yeah. Gravity is not your friend trying to get back up. You got a, you know, you got your tackle bag, you got a couple of rods, a chair, mm -hmm. a lantern, and a... Cooler. Yeah. So let me ask cooler. you, how long ago was it that you discovered catfish in the river? I'm trying to just find out for myself how long, how long they've been prevalent. Okay, so we fished the lower section of the river, the, the lowest section in New Hampshire, um, which goes from the Hinsdale Dam down to the, to the, uh, the border. Down the mass border, yeah. yeah. Um, that was the section we caught them in, and I'm trying to guess, what do you, I think 2010? Yeah. No, before that. We moved to Chesterfield in 2008, and we moved out of Chesterfield in 2011. So it was 2009 <coughs> I started catching catfish. I think when I first heard of them, I think I saw one on the cover of the Hawkeye. It was an 11-pounder. That would be Caught one. from a little kid that had That was my thing. nephew. Yeah. That was the very first state record was his. And it was, I want to say, I actually think I, it was a Hawkeye, I don't know why I remember, well, I guess I know why I remember it. It was a Hawkeye I picked up 
on the way to our honeymoon in Maine. I grabbed yep. it on the way up. So that was two thousand. That was August of two thousand eleven. Yep. And uh, so that and I was. And that like, was yeah. That was two years after we started catching them. Exactly two years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And that's when I. And then my buddy started going for Champlain like two years after that. And I was you know wanting to go up with them and and uh, finally I I started getting them last year. Started going after them, but they've been having a uh, a derby out of Holyoke. This year was their yeah. 39th annual derby. So they've mm -hmm. been, I'm guessing, at least below the Holyoke Dam for quite some, and potentially above it, I guess. I don't know much about the derby, but now they yeah. fish both above and below the Holyoke Dam. I, I met a guy, I guess, anyways, we could go on like this all the time with this, but I think <laughs> we've got the information enough for the video. So we're going to say goodnight to Matt here on the video. And I'm probably going to sit here and talk to him for another half an hour. We're going to be picking each other's brains. <laughs> so thanks a lot for tuning in. Go out and catch a catfish. It's better than any fish in the state. You can keep your lake trout. You can keep those little tiny little bass that you catch. <laughs> and those little brook trout. Use those for bait. But anyways, <laughs> go after some catfish. We'll talk to you later. Yeah.